videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. There are a few restaurateurs, cooks, authors, or even TV personalities quite as famous as Georgia's own Paula Dean. Sure, the queen of good old fashioned clog your arteries cooking has most definitely seen her habits fall out of style over these past few years. That didn't stop her from becoming synonymous with the American culinary scene. And personally, to me, that food looks delicious. Anyways, the culture of the American South is closely aligned with its cuisine, which is why the massive estate Paula called home for close to two decades was a luxurious waterfront residence located on the exclusive Wilmington Island near Savannah, Georgia. There, Paula's resort-like property known as Riverbend came to embody the natural warmth and charm in those American South celebrate as part of their rich heritage. Paula bought this 14,500 square foot custom built French Caribbean style home in 2006 for just $3.75 million. At the time, her desire to live here was less about the size of the home than its location. Situated on the Wilmington River Bend, like the one in Alabay, Georgia, where Paula spent years on her grandparents' estate, the similarities between the two were enough for Paula to instantly fall in love. But as much as she might have loved it, she still under took a complete rebuild after her purchase, telling Vi Magazine, We saw we couldn't do what we wanted there with renovations, so we bought it as a teardown and started again. Considering how busy Paula was at the time hosting a show for the Food Network while also sometimes entertaining hundreds of people at once and filming cooking demonstrations from her kitchen, she decided to redesign the house in a way that would help her fulfill her contract obligations. Private and secluded, Paula Dean's longtime estate is accessed through a gated entrance with a beautiful driveway that's enhanced with lush landscaping. Even with eight bedrooms as well as nine bathrooms, this expansive property still manages to maintain a warm and inviting atmosphere that includes luxury details like charming salvaged fixtures, soaring ceilings, and exposed beams at every turn. Never happier than when she's cooking, Paula made sure that her open concept kitchen would become the heart of the entire estate. This vast room has a high vaulted ceiling, which was inspired by Paula's many trips to the Caribbean. It also includes a wooden table and chair set, provides the perfect spot for intimate family meals. More formal dining can take place on the other side of the room, where Paula has placed a gorgeous dining room table. Adjoining this area is a butler's pantry that's nearly an exact carbon copy of the type that you might find in a stately English home. It's fitted with antique dressers as well as shelves to hold Paula's china and silver. Her most prized possessions in this space are a silver cupboard and a nearby shelving unit, both of which are antiques. Speaking of old things, Dean also bought wood from a 200-year-old Savannah restaurant to finish the flooring throughout the connecting hallways of her home. Over in the great room, a buffet sideboard has been custom fitted with concealed refrigerating and heating drawers. You know, just in case you're looking for something hot or cold to snack on in a pinch. Timeless chandeliers also hang from the ceiling above and create an enchanting atmosphere. And there's the sitting area near the fireplace that offers views of the river beyond. In addition to a very accommodating guest quarters located on the home's second wing, the main building also holds Paula's favorite spot of all, her bathroom. She told Vi Magazine, it's actually a bathroom come living room, so spacious, I have managed to fit three sofas in there along with the tub, boasting a spa quality bathtub and a spacious vanity area finished with fine marble work. This bathroom is truly one of a kind and so is the bedroom that it's attached to. With a private terrace and a custom walk-in closet, there's simply nothing or that Paula could possibly want when it comes to her own private space. But of course, for someone with as much skill in the kitchen as Paula, one cooking space simply wouldn't cut it. And to round off her home, she installed an outdoor kitchen that her husband, Michael, largely considers his own. Out here is a farmhouse dining table set which can seat 12, in addition to nearby bar stools where guests can watch the chef cook. Just beyond that is a pool boasting a dive-in theater with a pop-up screen for swimmers to take in some cinema while practicing their breaststroke. I mean, that's pretty cool. 
Elsewhere on the grounds are two guest cottages along with a three bedroom apartment situated on the second floor of a 10,000 square foot barn. The bottom floor here has also been repurposed into an eight car garage. Long story short, there's nearly an endless number of ways to enjoy yourself at Riverbend, which is why it's kind of shocking that after nearly 20 years here, Paula and her hubby decided to list the estate in 2015 for $12.5 million. Apparently, even for a place as nice as this, that price tag was a little too high. Over the next few years, Paula would slash away at that number until the home was being marketed for $7.25 million. Shortly after, it sold in 2020, but the closing price was never publicly listed, although it was touted as being the highest residential sale in Chatham County history. When news first broke that Paula Dean was moving on from Riverbend, People Magazine reported she was sticking around Savannah, but no one knew exactly where. As it turns out, with the sale having happened at the offset of the pandemic, Paula and Michael moved into their son Bobby's guest house. When asked to discuss the living arrangement, Bobby told South Mag, We're a close family. We always have been. When my mom said they were selling the house, I told her we have a perfectly good guest house and I could use built-in grandparents. She said, are you sure? We might be there for 30 days or more. They have been there a year. Living in such close proximity gave Paula a bundle of time to spend with her grandchildren, but it's also afforded her the opportunity to start something new. With the pandemic having canceled a number of her personal appearances, Paula was looking for something to do with herself. That's when Bobby suggested she start her own YouTube show, which is how Quarantine Cooking was born. Averaging tens of thousands of viewers, these bite-sized cooking sites segments were originally filmed in Riverbend's kitchen before Paula officially moved out. But eventually, she shifted her location from there to the home that she and Michael bought back in 2004 when they were first married. This second Savannah property is said to be valued at $1.3 million. It includes three bedrooms, three bathrooms, as well as 5,646 square feet of space. As you've now no doubt come to expect from a Paula Dean abode, this home includes a marvelous kitchen with all the bells and whistles, wooden floors, marble backsplash, not to mention a large kitchen island and a fridge. Opposite the kitchen is the home's formal dining room that's right next to a series of picture frame windows providing pleasant views of the backyard. And right around the corner from there is the home's living room with a stone fireplace and a series of French doors that lead directly outside. Since returning to this address in late 2021, Paula has begun renovating the residence and is still very much in the thick of transforming this place into her ultimate dream home. If anyone deserves to enjoy retirement, it's certainly someone who's worked as hard as Paula Dean has throughout her many decades on this planet. I mean, she might not be everyone's cup of tea and her calorie rich serving sizes definitely aren't for everyone. but. There is simply no denying the impact that she made on the American cooking scene. All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this latest house tour to a close. Thank you so much for watching. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. At what age would you eventually want to downsize into a smaller home, if ever? Let me know when you think it's time to start living the simpler life in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name's Kara. If you enjoyed this look into the homes of Paula Dean, then don't go anywhere quite yet because coming up next, I'm taking you inside the homes of Martha Stewart. I'll see you all next time. Bye. As you might expect from a legend like Martha Stewart, she's lived in some beautiful properties over the years. I mean, her brand is all about cooking and home decor, so she makes sure the places that she calls home also match her image. Whether it's an upscale Hamptons retreat, a massive farmhouse, or a historic vacation home, Martha is living in style. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Martha Stewart is an American icon. Not only has she spent time as an entrepreneur, but she's also a world-famous television personality and one-time 
full-time model inmate who over the years of her decade spanning career has earned a net worth estimated to be in the range of $400 million. These days, the Martha Stewart brand is still an integral part of Americana. So in that way, it's pretty fitting to discover that Martha has homes located all around the northeastern seaboard of the United States. In fact, she's been growing her real estate profile since the 70s and over the years, it's expanded to include half a dozen properties, only a few of which she actually spends much time in herself. For instance, the first property she ever picked up was a gigantic farmhouse located in Westport, Connecticut. Shortly after, she purchased another sprawling estate when she found a property located in the hamlet of Katona. And then there's Martha's stunning woodland retreat located on Mount Desert Island known as Skyland. And that's only the beginning of her homes. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this time checking out the homes of none other than Martha Stewart. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Martha Stewart's first home became a labor of love between her and her then husband Andrew, who purchased this gigantic farmhouse together way back when in 1971 for the amazingly low price of just $46,750. Those were the days. At the time, they had dreams of turning what was already on this two acre plot into the perfect family home, but the original residence was in rough shape. First built back in 1805, by the time Martha got there, not only did the property have a seriously neglected neglected backyard, but the picket fence was in shambles, the kitchen was in total disarray, and there was no porch, garage, driveway, or even a working toilet. Regardless, the couple got to work and undertook much of the renovations themselves. By 1975, the couple decided to expand further. They bought the lot located next to theirs for another $47,000. This time, they added two additional greenhouses, a chicken coop, an all-seasons garden, and a massive veggie garden, turning their home into a full-fledged farm. Now, in terms of the interior of the main house, the original structure boasted three bedrooms and two bathrooms, but Martha would expand that count to five bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms, increasing the overall square footage to 6,710 square feet. Martha was so hands-on during the reno, she even got down on her hands and knees to stencil the wooden floors while also painting the remarkable mural that highlights the front hallway. Since moving here and undertaking all of these renovations, Turkey Hill, as it's come to be known, is what many people consider to be Martha's most iconic home. Not only did Martha fill its halls with some of her most enviable antiques, but it was in this very house that Martha would write several of her first cookbooks, including Entertaining, which gave her fans an in-depth look at her dining room. This was complete with her grandmother's china and even her mother-in-law's silver. Martha would live in this house for 30 years. She only moved out and started spending time in her litany of other properties in 2007. At that point, she sold the farmhouse for $6.7 million. Dubbed Cantito Corners, Martha Stewart's current sprawling farmhouse is 153 acres of land that she purchased back in 2000 for the whopping price of $15.2 million and located in Bedford, New York. Sold to Martha by the family of Ruth Sharp, a millionaire who had owned the property for 50 years before her passing, this estate is composed of several buildings strewn throughout the immense grounds, making it look more like a village than, say, a home. <laughs> when staying on this property, Martha resides in a three-story farmhouse first built in 1925 and often referred to as the Winter House. This structure features a spacious front porch, a fireplace, and stylish dormer windows. After taking on the property, Martha reached out to architect Alan Greenberg to expand the main farmhouse. Not only did he turn an old garage that used to hold farming equipment into a brand new entertaining space just off the kitchen, but he also took a nearby barn and turned it into an office project room for Martha's endless amounts of arts and crafts. In addition to Martha's main residence, there's also a colonial structure that dates back to 1770, which once served as the original home for the property called, poetically enough, summer house. There's also a cottage, a guest house known as Maple Avenue House, and a more contemporary home built towards the back of the property. Rounding things out are a series of horse stalls, barns, and greenhouses. And for a finishing touch, Martha imported cobblestone from Elizabeth, New Jersey, the state where she was born and raised, to pave the courtyards throughout the property. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, those two homes are fantastic. But when Martha's looking to get away for a little R&R, &R, she also has a couple of vacation 
aging properties that are also enviable. Let's start with her historic house located in Maine. Martha calls it Skylands and it sits on Mount Desert Island. Like many of Martha's other homes, this property is steeped in history. Completed in 1925 for Edsel and Eleanor Ford of the Ford Motor Company, Skylands is sprawled across 63 acres of pristine woodland. The Ford family would summer here every year until 1980. 17 years later, Martha would buy the property for herself for $5.4 million in 1997. At the time of the sale, everything in the home was included, which meant that Martha didn't have to buy a single plate, even though she's no doubt added her share over the years. The massive stone house sits on top of a hill and contains a dozen bedrooms alongside 8.5 baths and nearly 15,000 square feet of space. It also includes granite paving throughout the interior, beamed ceilings as well. Rounding out the additional spaces is a cathedral-like main hall, a sun-filled living room, a cool flower room, a stunning library, and a kitchen to die for. But as eye-catching as the interior of this place is, when Martha's spending time here, it's really all about those views. Over the years, Martha has taken to spending more and more of her free time here, and it's gradually become the favorite of her many homes. In 2015, she decided to expand the property by purchasing a $4.2 million six-acre neighboring estate called Ox Hill Law. This addition may be less grand than Skylands, but it still includes a main residence that boasts nine bedrooms, 7.5 bathrooms, and roughly 6,800 square feet of living space. Finally, we've come to Martha's Hamptons escape. She fell in love with the Hamptons during a summer spent at Kurt Vonnegut's home in the 90s and became so enchanted with the idea of living there that she found her own slice of heaven and purchased what has come to be known as Lily Pond Lane in 1995 for three million dollars. First built in 1873, this shingled cottage space is just a 10 minute walk from the beach and at one point featured some truly stunning rose gardens that Martha eventually ripped out, worrying about the potential safety of her grandchildren. Much like with most of her other properties, once Martha moved in, she began to renovate thoroughly. While keeping many of the original fixtures to retain as much charm of the property as possible, Martha would touch up the cracked plaster ceiling, add additional windows to provide further natural lighting, and she even added a fresh coat of paint to replace the white walls with warmer buttercream tones. Meanwhile, outside is a garden lover's paradise. Not only are there gorgeously green private hedges, there are also trees and plants that run for about as far as the eye can see. In the event that gardening isn't your cup of tea, then you can spend time in either the gigantic pool or the even bigger front porch that houses a dining table capable of seating as many as 60 guests. Over the years, Martha would come here whenever she needed a little time to get away from it all. But being the busy person that she is, that didn't wind up happening all that often. As such, Martha eventually decided to sell this property for $8.4 million in 2021. All right, guys, that's going to bring this look at four of Martha Stewart's most remarkable properties to a close. Which one do you think suits Martha best? It's hard to choose, but maybe I'll go with her first farmhouse or her Hamptons getaway. Anyways, be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comment. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.